You! Scavenge somewhere else! Nope, I'm sorry, my friend, but I'm gonna scavenge right here. If you don't like it, fight me. And you don't want to fight me because, um, Ruben's a fighter and he's gonna knock you out. Mama said knock you out, much like LL Cool J would. Hey everybody, welcome to Falcon Place Forsaken Fortress Strategy here on Spooky October Month for the channel. This is probably the moment that if you are not here for a long introduction, or at least kind of semi-long, you might want to skip forward. I should have a link somewhere on the video, you could jump forward to the actual gameplay itself. But I believe that this is really important for me to talk about this game a little bit because it's an early access game. So as much as I want to enjoy this game and really endorse it, there's a few things you should definitely know about. And I'll cover more of it as we go along with the gameplay itself. But to start off the video, um, this is very much comparable. As a matter of fact, it's almost a union of Death State and This War of Mine brought into one single entity. If you're familiar with the channel, you know for a fact that I've covered those games before. This is actually has a really good potential of being an amazing game by the time it's done. Right now, though, there's a few balance issues that need to be addressed. There's a few bugs and glitches here and there. It's a small team, so that's probably the reason why it's kind of slowly being developed. But if this keeps getting developed well, by the end-all product, it could be a really amazing game. Not to say that I don't enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it, or else I would not be playing it. But I would definitely have a great time with this game, if not for those issues that need to be looked into here. So, let me go into new game over here really quickly, and we'll go into endless mode. Now, what's really cool about this game, I will give it credit, that when you start off, it gives you a few choices here of how you want to win play the game. Survival mode, you and your teammates are trapped in this dangerous city, survive 20 days so your friends can rescue you. You have challenge mode, which is you are trapped in the city, clear out the city gate to win, fight your way out, and then you have your endless sandbox mode where you just want to survive as long as possible. So, right off the bat, this is actually really great, because some games give you like a bit of a limit where it's like, well, this is your goal, there's no other way around it. This actually gives you a chance to play the way you want to play, which is actually really great. For the purpose of this little small series, we'll be doing endless mode, though, and we'll go ahead and confirm that. Did I confirm endless mode? I hope so. Um, let's see, we have Ruben, and we have Joshua. Uh, initially, you get to pick two people here that are going to be part of your team. Your team could grow up to three people at one time, which is a bit of a limit, just so you don't get too overpowered. But, you know, you start off with two people, and then you can recruit one other person as you go forward here. I like to start off with Ruben as a fighter, and then Joshua as a scavenger, which gives you a small little edge early on. You have Trader, which you'll obviously have better trades when you actually barter with other people. I'm not really sure what logistic is for just yet. Sharpshooter is pretty self-explanatory. Engineer would probably build stuff a lot faster for you as well. But I'm going to go with Ruben and Joshua over here, so let's start this off here really quickly. Alrighty, so this right here is going to be our startup point. This is going to be your base where you're trying to survive and most be doing most of your building from and whatnot. Really quickly, I'm going to have Ruben come over here and close this door up. And I'm going to have Joshua come over here and start building this um, bed. Well, it's not really a bed just yet, right? It's a bunch of barbed wire sheets, a few... Uh, Pillows and, uh, what is it, sheets? Well, I guess it's clothing sheets, as I mentioned. But yeah, he's going to start working on this really quickly. Now, with Ruben, I can come over here, and I could go into build mode. If you go into construction mode, you can actually build a few things. Campfire is going to be really important to set up as soon as possible, because we'll notice over here that the, the temperature is 15 Celsius. Um, I'm an American scumbag myself, so I'm more, I guess, um, I prefer Fahrenheit, because that's what I'm used to. That's what I grew up with. However, I've been playing enough games, um, UK games, this is not a UK game, this is actually by Chinese developers if I'm right, so, you know, if I'm wrong, correct me on that one. But they're using the Celsius thing over here as well, which is the worldwide, um, acceptable, uh, thing to measure temperature, right? But, you know, I'm used to Fahrenheit, but I played enough games to know for a fact that 14 Celsius is kind of a little bit on the cold side, so you want to stay around like 20, 30 or something, if I'm correct here. If I'm wrong, again, correct me, please, because, you know, what do I know? I'm just over here trying to talk what I do know, limited, based on video games itself. So our bed's about to get built over here. This is one of the things that I kind of want to talk about. When you are building stuff in the base, it takes a while. Now, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, obviously, Falcon, it takes a while to actually build anything. And well, that's true. However, when you're playing a game, you don't want to necessarily stop and have this actually go on in the background. That was actually built pretty fast, but sometimes things could actually last a bit longer to build. So it definitely breaks the flow of the game sometimes. Right now, if we go into our inventory, this is what we have available to us right now. We can eat vegetables and fruit to upkeep our energy, our hunger, wellness, injury, morale, and everything like that. The uh, wellness is going to be based on how cold you are, so if you definitely don't want to get sick, which is a possibility in this game, you want to make sure that your base is actually kind of warm. Also, when you're out scavenging, if you're out scavenging in the nighttime, it's going to get kind of cold, so you have to kind of give them clothing so they don't actually get any illnesses or sicknesses, because that will definitely deter their progress going forward. So, a lot of the basics of this game are actually really quite well done, which is the reason why I'm excited about it, but there's definitely things that have to be worked on, as we will cover here pretty soon. But yeah, a way to kind of speed this up here, like a little bit of a fast-forward option, would be great. 
Right now, though, since we're in the base, we already got this here built up. There's no weapons to our team. We have to go out here and scavenge some items to get some of our constructions built here. So let's go to the world map here really quickly. Again, if you're familiar with this war of mine, this will look very similar as well. Um, you know, is it a straight-up rip-off? Well, I'm not sure, but, you know, it's um, up to the whole person here that you want to kind of judge it as. But I like it. It's basic, it's simplistic, and I know where I'm going. It tells you if a place is difficult, normal, easy, etc., etc. You want to start off with going to the refugee camp for a fact, though. Because over here, you actually gather a bunch of items for free, more than likely. And um, you will also grab your third person. So I'm going to have Ruben come over here and start working on this guy. Now remember, Joshua is our scavenger, so he's going to obviously be able to scavenge a lot faster than Ruben would. You will see this right now, as a matter of fact. So he's going to start scavenging. You see he is over here building his bar a lot faster than Ruben would. Now also to note, it's a pretty interesting mechanic, but the more items in a certain location that you're actually looting, the longer the bar will actually take to fill up, which is actually pretty cool. That's the reason why you want to have a scavenger over here. So I'm not going to grab all these items that we found with Joshua over here. Close this out. Ruben's going to continue doing his thing over here. I'm going to run up here and grab these items. This episode, by the way, just expect a bunch of scavenging. We'll get more into the whole meat of the game probably further into the episode, if not until the next one. But this is going to be a perfect chance to kind of give you the basics of the game itself. So once Ruben is done, uh, a window will pop up letting me know that he's done. Excuse me? Can you, um, yeah, sir. This is actually my, oh, Ruben's done here. Let's pick up the stuff with Ruben here. And Ruben, come over here. You! Scavenge somewhere else! Nope, I'm sorry, my friend, but I'm gonna scavenge right here. If you don't like it, fight me. And you don't want to fight me because um, Ruben's a fighter and he's gonna knock you out. Mama said knock you out, much like LL Cool J would. Let me have Joshua come over here and scavenge this guy. Ruben, you come over here and scavenge over on this side. We're also gonna recruit an individual here pretty soon. Now, in this game, you lose your people quite easily. Luckily, you could definitely recruit people to make up for those people, and what's cool about it is that there's no leveling system, so if you lose somebody that you um, grew attached to, you're not going to lose any sort of progress in terms of skills or anything like that, but their skills are going to be their job class in a sense. So Helen, for instance, is a trader, so she's going to have better time um, making trades with other people for lesser items. Um, Josh was a scavenger, Ruben's a fighter, you know what I'm talking about, right? So with Helen over here, I grew up in a small village, my father grew crops, and I helped him sell the merchandise. I have a natural gift of convincing people, especially when making a deal, so we're going to accept her. She's going to be my third party member over here. Ruben's over here done as well, you find an injury kid, chemical scrap. Right now I'm not really paying attention to what they're picking up, but we soon will once we're in the base because we'll kind of figure out what items we do need to actually continue going forward here. What I like to do as well is come over here, Helen. Let's actually have you trade items with Joshua, because Joshua's a faster scavenger. We're almost better off having him scavenge, and then we toss all the extra items that we find over to like a slower scavenger like Helen or uh, Ruben over here. And then we could definitely scavenge and make this a lot faster. Uh, it still takes a while, obviously, but it's a little bit faster this way. So, let's see, Joshua, come over here and start looting through here. Yes. Helen, let's have you run around the corner over here. Ruben, you're done. Perfect. I'll talk to you pretty soon here, Ruben. Yes. Um, Joshua's done already as well. Joshua's What's really fast. On? Come on, Joshua. Let me just kind of uh, give some commands away over here before you start bothering me again. And Ruben, let's have you come down. Oh, there's a fridge over here. Find out what's in this fridge, my friend. I'm not sure these are items from these people, but, you know, they don't really mind. Yeah. So um, I'm going to obviously take them. Until somebody, you know, actually that person was like, Hey, go scavenge somewhere else. And I was like, nah, it's all right, dog. I want to scavenge over yes. here if you don't mind. We can't pick up those vegetables. His inventory is already full. That's going to be a little bit of a problem right now. So let's have you pick this up. I'll probably have Joshua go over there and pick up the items that he was trying to attempt to grab. Uh, let's see here. Joshua, you're done with that little washer machine, dryer, whatever it might be. Let's have you scavenge over here instead. Ruben, can you please uh, exit the premise here so I could do what I... Oh, come on. All you guys are filled up already? Alrighty. This is what I meant about coming over here early on and just scavenging. As soon as um, Joshua is over here filled up, we're going to basically turn around and go back home and dump off the stuff that we do have. Uh, excuse me, my friend. Can you um, please remove yourself? Yeah. Yeah, this is mine. Yeah, you can go elsewhere. Yeah. Don't show that knife off to me. You're not going to do anything with it, buddy. I dare you to try something. There you go. Great. This is my area. You don't tell me what to do. Um, now, trading. For instance, if I wanted to trade with Helen over here, let me number one. Showcase Helen really quickly. Here is another trader. Actually, no, this is a person that you could probably recruit. Let's see. Yes, this is Don. She's the logistics person. 
Uh, we can only recruit up to three people at once, so right now, unfortunately, we can't do much about it. But with Helen, I could come over here, potentially, and do some trading. And obviously, because she's a trader, she'll get better deals, so you definitely want to trade with a trader, as opposed to somebody else. And over here, I could trade some items that I felt like it. It doesn't really give you a really good indication as to what is the value of what, so you kind of just throw a few items over here, and then pick a few items, and it'll tell you if, um, you know, come on, be serious, he's not down with this trade over here. But, you know, this is a way to kind of measure up to what you're doing over here. Now, Joshua, are you done over here? Are you filled up, buddy, or do you have a few more items? No, you can actually pick up a few more pieces of metal and maybe even some wood. I have a good idea that you'll probably find some over here, so let's have you do that. We will come back to Ruben. As a matter of fact, let's zoom out here if we can. I'll be able to pick everything up. Perfect. You can actually pick up one more piece of wood and one more piece of metal, but... Because you can stack them up to five and eight, if I'm correct here, but... Let's just go back now really quickly here and dump us some of the stuff because instead of, you know, just nitpicking around my inventory and dragging on this episode longer than it should, I'm just going to go ahead and take a shortcut, go back home, dump off the items, and come back one more time. Now, as you can see right now, our statuses are dropping here a little bit. If you want to leave, you want to go back to the exit, and then from the exit, you'll be able to choose the return home feature over here. And obviously, it's all taking time to get back home, to come back over here. And obviously, nighttime is going to be kind of cold, so you definitely want to make sure that by the time it's nighttime, you have a campfire built. So I'm going to have everybody come inside here really quickly. Alrighty. So, first thing on the agenda. We have a campfire over here. We might want to get this up running as soon as possible. And... Let's see, it's 13. It's going to be nighttime by the time it hits 20, if I'm correct here. So, it's going to be two hours to go back over there. Two hours to get back. 17, so we have three hours to scavenge, roughly. You know what? I think we could bypass this now that we're back over here. All the stuff in our inventory we dumped in here, obviously, automatically, which is actually a pretty cool feature. Ammunition, go back inside and go exit. By the way, Helen has a knife to start off with, so we want to unequip this. And we want to give this over to our fighter, Ruben. There you go. Alrighty. Let's go back to the world map, and we're going to come back to um, refugee camp one more time. Now, as I mentioned, the statuses. The longer you're out here, you get tired, so our energy and our hunger is going down. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, that I'm not too thrilled with the game, hunger goes down a bit too fast sometimes. And it's really hard to um, mitigate because of the fact that it's kind of RNG-based in terms of what you're going to find. Not every single looting area is going to have the same item every single run, so sometimes it is based on your luck in general, what you're going to be finding over here. So, um, hunger definitely has to be looked into. It goes down a bit too fast for my liking. So that's definitely one of the balances issues I want to talk about. Other balance issue will be combat, and we'll get... We'll talk more about that once I get into some combat over here. Joshua, you loot over here. Yeah. Helen, let's have you come over here. You want to fight? No, you don't want to fight me, buddy. Ruben will pound you to the ground. He's going to Hulk smash you, my friend. Grab all these items over here. What's Helen, I'm not sure. Like, these people over here, they're they're not, like, combatant, right? But they, they seem to rub you the wrong way. Like, they're always kind of like, you don't want to cause any trouble. See? I mean, like, what's your problem? Stop being such a dick. I'm aware that, um, you know, life over here probably isn't so swell, but there's no reason to be confrontational with another human being. Uh, the main antagonist in this game, other than bandits and other humans, will be mutants. So not zombies, we mentioned that state, but they're not zombie enemies, they're gonna be mutants. Meaning, these mutants could actually use weapons against you, which is kind of really troubling sometimes, I will tell you that much right now. Grab all these items over here, Helen. Let's have you progress forward over here. And... there's another traitor bank there, I do believe. Ruben, there's nothing over here to scavenge, so Ruben, you take over this one. What's going Helen will have you run down over here. I have my eyes on you. See, they, they always think I'm going to do something bad. All I'm really doing is stealing from you. That's not really too bad now, is it? It's not like you're using this wood for anything anyway. Grab this stuff over here. Joshua, let's have you run down to here. Ruben, let's have you run down this way. I think we're just about done, guys, so don't you worry one bit. This will be done here pretty shortly, but this is, again, part of the whole surviving process. You definitely have to go through this point. Otherwise, you're not going to have any items to survive, and this game is really hard because of the balance issues that I mentioned, so you definitely want to take any chance that you can to pick up these items for a fact. Um, excuse me, my friend. You might want to move out of there, please, because um, Helen wants to loot this area. Joshua? Oh, Joshua's going to do it instead. Alrighty, that's fine. That's even better. He's a lot faster scavenger anyway. Alright, I think we have just about grabbed everything here. There might be a few areas that I left behind some items in, but nope, everything seems clear here. Clear here? Yeah, we might be done, guys. So, good. We actually finished it a lot faster. My worry for this video was the fact that this is going to take a while. And not that it hasn't, but obviously it's something you definitely want to do every single run, because it's free items for you to actually start off your base with. 
So we'll come down all the way over here and we will probably still have enough time for a little bit of a combat lesson here. So let's go to return home. Darkness will cover your action. Try operating at night. The game will give you a lot of tips like that, and again, those are some of the balance issues that need to be looked into. Stealth doesn't really work as well as it really should. Night is coming, temperatures too, so this is bad. Let's have Ruben come over here and close this door to kind of keep some of the insulation inside. I'm going to go over here with yeah, Helen. She's not an engineer, so nobody of these people that I have are actually going to build stuff faster, but we might as well use her and we want to set up a campfire. I'm going to say somewhere over here is relatively ideal. Excuse me, place it down and come over here and build this. So you first you set up the blueprint and then you actually have to build it itself. Alrighty. Now I'm gonna have you come over here and start sleeping. Day... The, the day portion comes around... what time? I wanna say 6 or 5 if I'm correct here. So right now we're at 18. Right now this is the night portion. For the night portion you always wanna have the campfire running or else you would get cold and get sick and that's no good. Meanwhile, let's see if there's anything else we could have Ruben built, and we definitely can. I want to get this kitchen up and running because hunger is a big issue in this game, so we want to have that happening. I could set up the kitchen maybe over here. I could put it over here as well if I wanted to, but I kind of want to have it in the same area, so build over here. Alright, so these guys over here will build meanwhile, and this is what I meant about the whole fast-forward feature. At least give me like a two-times feature so that I don't have to sit here and wait for this to actually happen. Again, I understand it's more realistic this way, but it sometimes does break the flow of the game a little bit because I just want to get out there and do some more stuff. More importantly, um, if I was to skip over to daytime, which I can right now by clicking this button, but this uh, option over here, we'll skip over to daytime. The only person that will get the benefit of being rested will be Joshua, which is pretty bad because then you have the next day with a bunch of people tired. I'm going to go ahead and add five wood over here to um, stoke the fire. So not only do you have to have the campfire built, but you need to actually be able to stoke it which we're doing now. Um, so not only will Joshua be the only one that's rested, but these people will be actually tired. And if you're tired, you actually move on the field a lot slower, which is, you know, obviously really realistic, but again, it can put you at a really big disadvantage. So that's one of, the, one of the other things I want to have happening here. So we want another bed for a fact, so we have another person resting too. So at least we'd have like two people out in the field, fully rested, and one back at the base resting. So you could definitely break up parties this way as well, which is actually pretty cool. Crafting workbench is going to be actually really ideal as well. This is going to be, what, 15 and 12? Is that going to be enough for the shanty bed to have a backup? Yes, as a matter of fact, yes. And the well will give us water, which we use to cook as well. Uh, let's start off with the... Start off with the crafting bench over here. Let me just place this over here and have you build that. Uh, as soon as Ruben is done with the kitchen, I'm going to have him start cooking here. Come on, Ruben. Come on, Ruben. Zoom in over here. Find out what Ruben's up to. Yeah, what's going on, buddy? Let's have you go ahead. And, excuse me, production production menu is what we're looking for. Vegetable soup, we'll add that. We'll add two because we have enough, we had enough, um, actually we have enough food for, we have enough vegetables for one more soup, but we need water. I could have made the well, I could make the well instead of the bed to get another bit of water, another meal. But, again, as I mentioned, resting is a bit of a problem in this game, so you definitely want to be rested completely. So he's going to go over here and cook meanwhile. And then she's going to over here and start doing this. And this is the whole waiting process that I talked about. Now, if we come up here, this right here is going to be a production menu. We can upgrade this. And what this will do is if you upgrade that, you'll definitely get more items in the construction menu to actually build. Which, this is just minimal part of it. There's going to be a really big list of things you can actually build. Things that I haven't really unlocked myself just yet, but it's definitely there. Because of you know survival purposes, it actually is a bit difficult to get that far into the game. And you can also upgrade your pre-existing workstations as well. I will show that off as soon as she's, um, he's over here done or she's done. Joshua, how are you doing over here, buddy? Energy, almost filled up. Alrighty. You're hungry? Yeah, I know. We're all kind of hungry, though, buddy. So you're going to have to hold off there. Let's zoom in. Who's going to be finished first? Probably she will. Yeah. All right. She's done. Alrighty. So here you could actually upgrade this. And if you upgrade this, you'll actually be able to build more of uh, a particular item based on that workstation itself. So you'll get more access to weapons and stuff like that. Right now, what she can make is actually... Oh, you can make a nailed bat. I've never made this one before. I always make the iron hatchet or the dagger. This is the first time I had a nailed bat available. That's because we have a bunch of wood left over. Which, if I make this, we're not going to be able to make the bed. So as you can see right here, the hatchet takes up a lot less wood to make this happen. So the nail bed could be really useful, but we want to get a bed up and running. So you know what? I'm going to have to say negative to that one right now. So let's have you build the second bed over here. And let's see if I can remember how to rotate this here. There we go. 
The rotating feature could sometimes be a bit wonky as well. That's another thing I wanted to note. A few of the things that I hope get looked into. So I rotated it. I just want to place it right here. Sometimes it'll just place randomly. It's kind of like, see, I tried to click it right here to make to confirm, but it just goes back to default. So come on. See, I just clicked again and all right, let's see if I have to click and hold. There you go. So you have to click, rotate, and then let go when it's situated. Which is so weird, like, it shouldn't really be that way, it's kind of annoying that way, but there you go. One of the few things that I really wanted to talk about. So, that's a bit wonky, but there you go. So we're gonna have a second bed up and running pretty soon, so we can have another person resting. I think we're gonna probably cut off the episode here as well. I think I did everything I wanted to do, so we will cover the stealth, the scavenging, and the combat mechanic next episode. Right now, we just basically got the whole premise up and running. I don't believe we have enough for a... actually, we do. We do have enough for a well, but if I make the well, we definitely will not be able to make a weapon, and I want to have at least two weapons on my people right now, because we have a dagger on Reuben, but I also want to grab a second weapon. So we probably will go with a hatchet. Yeah. So I'm thinking hatchet for a fact. Crowbar will let you... Let's see here. No, no, I don't want to make that. Can you give me... Oh, it can be used to break the door. Now, what's weird about that is that he could actually kick doors open as well, so I'm not entirely sure how beneficial the crowbar is. Maybe I haven't gotten that far to the point where there's actually doors you can't kick down. But so far in the game, I've only run into doors you could actually kick down yourself without the use of the crowbar. So, because of that, I'm going to actually make a weapon, and there you go. So, I'm going to cut off right here, guys. We'll come back next episode and do some of the stealth mechanic and see some of the enemies as well, because uh, I want to show off the mutants next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a thumbs up, leave a like, the support. It does me a lot. I will catch you next time.